Hi, I'm Sheila Walsh, Program Coordinator of the Radio Humber Diploma Program here at Humber College. Welcome to On the Radio, a webisode feature where we speak with industry experts and Humber alumni on all things radio. Today, Robert Turner and Jesse Lorraine. Hi, welcome to On the Radio, the web series that we um, we feature uh, guests from Career Prep, and we post them for future use in Career Prep class and for our students. And uh, today's guests are Robert Turner from News Talk 1010 and Jesse Lorraine, also from News Talk 1010. They came in uh, this cold winter day in 2015 to talk to our grads of 2015 about roles behind the scene. So I know you can't um, you can't see our students, but say hello, guys and gals. Here we go. So we're going to start off by asking a little bit about your backgrounds and you know, kind of when you realized you wanted to do radio. We'll start with Robert. Uh, for me, it was in high school. I started. Uh, it was my co-op placement for high school. Uh, and up to that point, I'd wanted. To, I thought about being a teacher, uh, and that I just didn't want to do it. And so I wanted something in media because I like tech stuff. And I ended up uh, at then CFRB, and still there. Still there, 20, 20 years later. Seventeen. Wow, that old yet. that's great. And how about you, Jesse? Um, I'm from Wyerton, Ontario. If anybody knows, it's where the groundhog is. <laughs> that's right, Wyerton Willie. And when I was in high school, I covered Wyerton Willie Day for my high school every February 2nd, and I loved going out with the video camera and interviewing people, and all the big media from Toronto would come up, and I guess I got excited, and that's where I got the bug to be in broadcasting. Excellent. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the day uh, in your life, typical day at CFRB, behind the scenes as a tech producer, behind the scenes at, as a chase producer, time you wake up, you know, main duties, and when you, you know, eventually wrap it up for the day. Uh, I get up at about 3.30. Um, I'm on the air as a host from 5 to 5.30 with Dave Agar. So I do prep from home, read the news sites, check Twitter, see what's going on. The newsroom sends out a couple of wrap emails with what's developed overnight, get prepped on that. And then we have a news meeting at 4.50 with uh, the whole morning crew. And then you go and start the John Moore show till 9? I'm on at 5 mm-hmm. and then to 5.30 and then John's show starts at 5. And yeah, I'm, I'm behind the scenes uh, basically running the show technically till 9 o'clock. Okay, then after 9, you do another debrief, and what time would you say you're out of there on an average day? Uh, 11 o'clock, if, if things are going well, significantly later. If things aren't, we've got to do the podcast, post-show meetings, those sorts of things. And we do a lot of pre-recorded content so that we know we have the content ready to go for the next day. Okay, how about you, Jesse? Uh, start my day at um, 2.15 in the mornings when I get up. Um, I get to work about 3. Did you say 2.15? 2.15 in the morning is when I awake, yes. <laughs> um uh, and then I, I get to work about 3.50. I mean, basically what Robert outlined is what I do in the morning. We pretty much do the same thing. We, we run the show, um, except Robert steers the ship. He's like the captain of the enterprise, right? He's running the controls, and I'm booking the guests. And then uh, after the show, we have our meeting, our debrief, and then I go ahead and start working on the next day's show, which means chasing guests. And I'll be doing that most of the afternoon. I'll grab a quick nap, uh, get up from supper, and see if the news has changed, and then I will continue to book more guests or cancel guests. And then um, if there's big news happening, and sometimes I don't get to bed till 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and then tomorrow comes 2, 2.15 in the morning. It's like Groundhog Day. See, ground is a theme. <laughs> uh, and then I start all over again. It sounds like, you're, like you really live your job. It sounds like you're always on. I love I love my job. Um People laugh that I, I mean, I don't watch Orphan Black or many shows because I always have CTV, CNN. I mean, I just love watching news 24-7. It's, it's just, I guess, just what I love. So you, you can't fake your jobs. You have to love them. You have to be really passionate about it. What's the best part of your jobs and the worst part of your jobs, Robert? Uh, the worst part of my jobs are the parts that aren't really radio because uh, I'm a manager too, so there's paperwork that is really not a lot of fun. But that's far outweighed by the fun part, which is getting to do work on a show. And what you do is instantly out there on the air. Uh, it's live, it's living, um, and you're totally connected to it. Okay. Um, I think the best part of my job, I mean, I absolutely love it when we have a really great show. And, and you know it when you have a great show at the end of the show, you just feel it. Like that was a, the best show. I mean... I think the lowest point is obviously family doesn't understand what I do, and we get in a lot of fights about that when I have to leave family events. I mean, it's conflict. But also, if I'm chasing a guest and I've gone through everything and I finally find the guy and he says no, 
or um, I can't find them. And that's the part that will drive me crazy. I, I can't find them. Robert knows it just drives me insane that I couldn't find somebody. So, I mean, that's the low point. It'll bother me all day. I just... <laughs> you, have, you have to let it go a little yeah. bit, right? Um, clearly, you guys work really close together. There needs to be a chemistry. How awful of a situation would it be if this wasn't a fit, if this wasn't a jive with, with, you know, your, with John Moore, who you produce for? Uh, I've worked with other people who there wasn't that fit, and it's just it's more like work. Um, and you're, it's a constant battle to get it done. Not that we don't battle now, because we have different uh, masters. My job is to make sure all the commercials air uh, and that things are relatively on time, uh, and their job is content. So, you know, he, the host is always going to think the thing that they have to say is way more important than getting to the commercial on time. If we don't play the commercial, we don't get paid, which is also kind of important. So it's that balance, and everybody works together well. When it doesn't work, it can be a bit of a train wreck. Okay, how about you? I don't think I've ever worked for a team as great as this team, and I think it's because we are kind of at the best, the top of the line when it comes to news talk. And I think, I think when you work with a bunch of professionals, it, it's it's just really fun. But when you're working with somebody who doesn't care as much about it as you, um, and you have to maybe pick up the slack for them a little bit, I mean, it can be a chore. And I mean, if the chemistry's not right and the host doesn't trust you, and you're pitching topics and they say no to everything, it'd be very frustrating. So I. I I'm glad that I get along with John, and he trusts me, and Robert, and, and Becky. And Becky is the uh, call screener, and... Uh, Becky, Becky Coles is kind of like our, our guest whisperer. She, um, she helps me out with uh, making the ra roundtable topics and content that way, and um, she also helps me when I bring the, the, the guests in. She's really great at background. Um, like, Becky knows everything about everyone. She loves to go out and do the schmoozing and the lunches with everyone, and she gets a lot of insider information that perhaps I don't get because I'm always stuck on a phone. Okay. What's her role call, just so we understand everything behind the scenes of a, a well, talk she, show? She's one of the producers of the morning show, but she also produces Mike, Mike Bullard's, Bullard's show. show. Oh, okay. So she's responsible for Mike as much as anyone can she's be between Mike's noon handler. and one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you that's a, that's a good job. Um, okay, well, we want to thank you both for coming in today and showing us a little bit of insight behind the scenes in, in your job. Before we leave, I know Robert's a big wrestling fan. So if he, uh, if if you were a wrestler, no, if she was a wrestler, uh, what name would you would you give? Jesse Lorraine. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this has got to be PG, right? Yeah, yeah, I, no, I don't no, think no. I have anything. I got nothing. Her finishing move would be the air check. I can tell you that. The air check. I like that. Okay. And how about you, Jesse? If if Robert was a wrestler, what would you call him? Oh my God! I don't even know anything about wrestling. <laughs> Robert, what would you always want your name to be? I don't know. Um, I'd probably have a silly game. I stumped them. All right. Yeah. You'll, have to, you'll have to get back to me. Anyway, thanks very much for coming in. And um, we want to we wanna make sure everybody takes some great uh, stuff away from here. And I think we have. So thanks again. All right. Thank you.